Hey, this is Kyle at Projection Hub, and today I'm going to show you how to create a business plan for an insurance agency. And the main thing I hope you get out of this video is I'm going to cover five key points that I think can really make or break, probably more so make your business plan, especially if you're trying to get a business loan, whether that's a startup loan, or even potentially trying to raise investment, but most likely trying to, to secure financing for your business. And so I'm going to be using this free business plan template. It's available at the link down in the description below, no strings attached. It's your template to use and it can help you through that. So I'm gonna be using this as my structure. I'm not gonna be writing a whole business plan in front of you because you wouldn't have time to watch me do that today. So it's pre-filled out with a fictitious example. And then as I'm kind of scrolling through and showing the structure, I'm gonna highlight those five key points and some examples of how to make sure you can apply those five key points to your business plan as well. So who is Projection Hub? We've helped more than 50,000 businesses, founders, business owners, create financial projections for their businesses. And including many insurance agencies that have, that have used our services and our products to help them create their financial projections. And who am I? As I mentioned, my name is Kyle. And before my time with Projection Hub, I actually spent seven years as a small business lender. And we had several insurance agency clients, actually. So I have some experience looking at some loan applications. And in that capacity, I would review business plans, refine those business plans, help the client put together a loan application package. So experience on that side of things too, when it comes to insurance agencies. And so if at any point you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. That really helps us as a fellow small business. And feel free to subscribe to the channel and all of our content is obviously related to insurance agencies, but we talk a lot just about like, money management and advice for growing your business. And so we would love to share that with you. So without further ado, I will go ahead and jump into it. So why is your business plan important? Especially for an industry like an insurance agency, I don't want you to feel like the responsibility of your business plan is to educate the lender on the industry or what it is that you're even really doing. Cause they understand what an insurance agency is and they kind of understand, you know, some of the industry benchmarks around that. And so what your business plan should focus on is your specific roadmap to making your insurance agency successful. And that means is including as much specific detail and examples and tangible things you can, which a lot of our five key points are gonna highlight around that. They're gonna be maybe not mind blowing things to you, but they are things that oftentimes, as when I was a lender, I would see that people wouldn't go deep enough on those, those areas. And so I'm gonna highlight those for you today. And starting to scroll through this, you're gonna see here in the table of contents, one thing that you probably noticed right away is that it's not super long. And so contrary to popular belief, a lot of people think your business plan needs to be really long to be good. And I actually think it's the opposite. Now it's possible to make a business plan too short, but I think the sweet spot for a business plan is around that 15 page to 20 page mark. And if you're getting much over that, what you deliver to your lender, the important details of your business plan are gonna get lost in all of the extra fluff that's being added in there. And so in this structure, you know, you're gonna see this heading, subheading, there's gonna be a brief description of what that subheading should include. And then a one to two sentence fictitious, you know, example for a fictitious secure right auto insurance based out of Atlanta, Georgia. And so many of the sections you see in when you're using this template, you're going to need to put more information in there, but you're also going to be able to remove some of this. So this is going to be kind of a floating number. Don't hold to that 16 too tightly, but I just want you to, you know, if you need to create a 50 page business plan to feel like you've got all your thoughts down on paper, that's a great exercise and you should do that. But what you deliver to a potential investor or lender or stakeholder should be the refined version of that. And so just, just keep that in mind. All right, now we're gonna start getting through, we're gonna go through the structure this year. Uh, first, we've got the executive summary. I want you to think about this as like the cover letter to a resume for a job application. This is really the first thing they're gonna see about you and know about you. And so you wanna kind of give them the quick hits of the highlights about you. So, you know, what the business is, what are you specializing in, who are you, where are you located, and some of your objectives or your goals for the business. Mission statement is kind of fluff, but if there's you know, a really core value to what you're kind of following in, like maybe that's boutique insurance, agency offering very specific, you know, high touch customer service or whatever, definitely include that. And it's not included in this example, but something some people consider adding, adding in their executive summary is like a quick financial snapshot. So maybe that's total startup costs, the sources you've identified for those that you would like to use for those startup funds, maybe when you plan to break even or what your target revenue goal is or those kinds of things. You can include that if you'd like to in a short paragraph. And then the company description is kind of just an extension of that executive summary. This is going to be a little bit more technical speak. Like you said here, you got some, some history. We're going to hit on one of the key points later on this. We'll talk about industry experience. You could mention that here a little bit, but we'll elaborate on that in here in a little bit. The, the actual legal structure, structure of the entity, you can include that up here. So these two sections are not the key points. They are necessary. Like if you don't have them, it will hurt you, but they're not going to make or break. Well, they could break, but they're not going to make your business plan. You just need to make sure you kind of have this in there. Okay, so market analysis, and this is going to bring us to our first key point, market analysis. And just initially what you see in here is you're going to see like an overview of the industry. I want you to think about that with a more like local scope. Don't do the like shark take thing where they come in and they're like, the insurance industry is $17 trillion because that's just, that's too big. You need to, you know, focus that into really where you're local, like where you actually expect to get a customer from. That's the industry you're talking about. That's the overview you're talking about, the local industry. 
talk about some of your, your main competitors, you know, where I live, I'm in Indianapolis, Indiana, you have some of the really big name insurance providers, you've got State Farm and Allstate and, and those ones. And you can talk about those in your business plan, but those are gonna kind of exist everywhere, right? Those are gonna be the big names. So if you're, you're obviously gonna be competing against them, but you might also talk about the independent insurance agencies that are gonna be more direct competitors for what you're doing. Or if you're like, yeah, you're just gonna be one boutique insurance provider in a sea of big name insurance providers, you know, you can mention that in your business plan. But the key point here is we need to demonstrate that there is room in the market for you. Now, something important about the insurance agency is it's not, or the insurance industry is it's not wide open, right? The majority, if not most people have insurance in, in our fictitious example, we're an auto insurance provider. And you know, you have to have auto insurance to drive a vehicle legally. So like, it's not like there's this massive opportunity. And so we need to be mindful of that in the, in the, in the market analysis. We're not going to talk about this from like a, here's a completely untouched opportunity that we're addressing. But maybe you're talking about how the current saturation of the market, especially in your market, is there's an opportunity because customers are under, you know, served, or maybe they're they're upset with the type of customer service they're they're receiving, and so maybe that's the kind of stuff we want to talk about. So maybe you're thinking like, what are examples that you can actually demonstrate? Now you can always pay for like market research to be done or survey to be done, but if you're working on a budget and you're trying to do this for free, there's certainly ways to do this. One, you can try and survey anyone you can think of in person, just like asking them, are they happy with their auto insurance? What do they dislike about it? Is it confusing for them? Is, it, is the pricing good? Is their customer service good? Just start to get that feedback from as many people as you can. And, and maybe another example you can do here is some keyword search volume, okay? So what I did is this is Google Keyword Planner. If you, it's free. If you create a, a Google AdWords account, you can do this for free. And I set my location to be Atlanta, Georgia, and I just wanted to search for auto insurance near me or car insurance near me, because I just wanted to see kind of what the trends are. And so what's helpful for me, so obviously I know there's more than 3,000 people per month that need car insurance, but there's 3,000 people a month in Georgia actually searching for car insurance. So in theory, these are new customers up for grabs, okay? That's a healthy amount. And then the more important thing here, you see this trend data. Year over year, or three months up 20%, year over year up 50%. So that's a big growth in people needing car insurance, right? So that's a good indicator to me. But again, because it's a very competitive industry, if you were to advertise for that, these bid ranges are pretty high and you can, you can, bet your bottom dollar that like the big boy insurance agencies are going to be bidding at the top range of that. So it's gonna be hard to compete on that front. So I'm not showing you this to say like that represents how many customers you have, but it is an indication that the, the market where you're located is healthy. It's growing. So you'll probably have chances at bat with customers versus if this was negative or flat, then you're only competing for existing customers. So that's a good thing. Another good reason I like doing this is it will give you keyword ideas. And so this might, if, if our lens is auto insurance, Maybe there's specific niche niches within that, you know, that we can offer. So people are obviously looking for cheap auto insurance. Let's see, triple A motorcycle. Look how, look how much oh, motorcycles up 40%, up 133%. So if I decided I want to be the motorcycle insurance guy, right, there might be an opportunity to do that. So this is some, some preliminary market research you can do that you could be talk about in your business plan. So this is a tricky industry to talk about market analysis just because it's not a novel industry and most generally everyone has insurance. So it's really just competitive. So you might have to talk some more about narrative things like in your town of 150,000 people, the insurance providers have really poor reputations and you've already talked to 500 people who all said they're really interested in changing car insurance, blah, blah, blah. Like that's good. That's good data. Okay. Moving on to market and sales strategy. So, and this will bring us to key point number two, which I'll get to. You need to include obviously what your, what insurance packages will be offered pricing strategy, sales strategy, how you're going to distribute that to them, your promotion, advertising, you're going to have a website, you're going to have social media. Like there's a minimum bar of things to include. And you need to spend some time thinking about that. The thing that's going to make this shine, the key highlight is customer acquisition demonstration and what some people call traction. That's a very common like tech phrase. And so you need to do all those things to talk about your marketing strategy. But key point number one was to, how can we think of tangible examples to actually demonstrate that there is a market? Key point number two is tangible examples to demonstrate how we're actually going to get those customers. So what we don't want the business plan to do is to have this mentality of like, we're going to build it and people are going to show up, you know, build it and they will come. That's not what we want to do. And so again, because it's insurance, it's going to be a little tricky because it's been around for a while and you can only get so creative in the way you're offering insurance. And so I understand there's some limitations here, but let's kind of think about this, you know, a popular, I would say example one here and two here are probably post launch examples, things you should be doing developing partnerships, basically lead gen funnels, you know, lead generation funnels for your business, for potential customers through referral relationships. Those are good things to be doing, but I really like example three as let's assume this is a startup insurance agency, you know, business plan. The reason I really like example three 
is because this kind of demonstrates hustle to me. Maybe you haven't launched yet, but and you decide, okay, well, I'm going to create social media channels and I'm going to talk about car insurance in a way that is really down to earth and people respond well to that and they ask me questions and I can give them advice and you build a little bit of a following there. That has multiple benefits. One, it validates that you are an expert and people like the advice that you're giving and you know they respond well to that. And two, that's a potential customer base. Now, not every social media follower is gonna be a customer and I totally understand that, but it does give you some sort of platform, whether that's to start collecting emails from interested people or you know just having a platform to, to be able to, to you know, potentially generate customers from is a creative way to be thinking about doing that. And you may think it sounds silly, but when I was a lender, if I saw someone was doing something specific and then they started a social media channel or whatever, and they build a following related to that, that definitely meant something if they would put that in their business plan. So think about doing that. Okay, moving on. Operations and management, this is gonna be kind of like the logistics of the business. Are you actually gonna have a facility and how that'll be laid out, your staffing plans, you know, customer service. But I, I had alluded to key point number three earlier on, and this is gonna to be to talk about relevant industry experience. Insurance is one of those industries where it's pretty critical that you have experience in the industry in order for your lender probably to feel comfortable doing this. So maybe that is, oh, and that makes me think of another example of customer acquisition demonstration might be like, do you already have, maybe you're, you were an insurance agent somewhere else and then you're starting your own firm. So maybe you already have like a book of business that you're planning to bring with you or something like that. Like obviously include that if you already have some sort of book, you know, to bring with you, that's a, that's a huge bonus. But along that same thought, highlight what type of relevant industry experience you have. When I was a lender, there would be many cases, probably not in the insurances, probably not in the insurance industry, but there was many cases where someone would spend a long career doing one thing and then they wanted to open up a business doing something that was absolutely unrelated, which isn't an automatic no from a lender, but it does create questions and some skepticism. And that's just another hurdle you have to kind of overcome. And so, especially in an in industry like an insurance, it is highly specialized. There's certifications involved and that kind of thing. So you're likely going to need to have worked in the insurance world for some amount of time before, you know, trying to start your own, or at least making sure you have an executive or a very key employee on your team that is an expert in it. I can help you through that. So make sure you highlight that experience and moving through here. Okay. This brings us to financial projections, which is the big one. And obviously we're a little biased projection of what we do is create financial projections and help clients create financial projections, but to show you what would be included in your business plan to break down your startup costs. So what are you actually going to need to get the business up and running? Where do you, what sources do you anticipate that coming from? Whether that's personal investment or you have a small investor or you're seeking financing from a, from different lenders at a nice little breakdown of the startup funds. We have kind of a five-year breakdown of some revenue forecasts with some key highlights like cost of goods sold, gross profit, you got estimated net income in here, and then some insurance specific data, like your customer, like your book of business, how many of those are active, your churn rate, how many you know customers you plan to lose each year, marketing spend some key ratios for that industry, your monthly operating expenses, and then a five-year financial pro forma statement for in income statement and cash flow projections. And then you could also create, create a, and include a balance sheet if you wanted to as well. You got a break-even analysis here, insurance businesses, especially independent can be like pretty marginal. So you can see that's happening in this year two, year three range. And so all of those charts and graphs were created using this template and I know I can feel the eye roll through the screen, pitching you something else, but of course, projection of this is what we do is what we specialize in. This was created by a very own CPA on our staff and has been used by you know hundreds of insurance agencies at this point to create their own financial projections. Financial projections are not easy to create. And so it is a specialized service, but not everyone wants to pay for an accountant or a CPA to build them for them, which can cost you know multiple hundreds or even thousands of dollars to do that. And this template has been built by an experienced CPA so that you can do it yourself. Very cheap, less than a hundred dollars. I'll even give you a promo code the end of this video to make it even cheaper for you if you're interested in using it. There's many templates out there. What's special about this template is that the revenue model is customized to insurance agencies. It's not just going to say like, what do you estimate your revenue is going to be? It's actually going to help you calculate your revenue. So it's going to ask you, you know, the blue boxes are where you input the information. It's going to ask you how many customers are you starting with? What's your advertising budget? How many, you know, your cost to acquire them? Your, what's your estimated churn rate? What type of insurance services do you actually plan to provide? Your commission structure, how does that change year over year? You're going to put in your, your monthly expenses. Like I already showed you your, your staff, your employees here in their compensation structure. And that's going to generate all of those charts and the financial statements that you need. So like your lender is going to want to see probably at least two years, maybe three years of projections. Some will want five years if they're really conservative. And so these go up to five years, so you're gonna have an annual summary of each, but then also the monthly breakdown of each of those years as well. And so you can grab that link down in the, the description, but that was used here. So key point number four is not have finance. 
not to have financial projections because those should be expected. Those are a minimum requirement for a strong business plan for a startup is to have financial projections. So key point number four is realistic financial projections. And maybe depending on your experience, maybe you're not 100% sure what is realistic and what's not. And so my recommendation to you would be just go to Google. Okay, actually I have two suggestions. One would be, you know, take some key numbers from your projections. Like let's go to these key ratios and find out, for example, what's a typical profit margin for an insurance agency. Now you could even, you could even specify that. Maybe you say auto insurance agency or auto insurance agency in Atlanta. The more specific you get, the harder it might be to find an answer, but you see here, okay, two to 10%. Also depending on your comfort level, you can use a tool like chat GPT or Bard or any AI chatbot. ask it the same thing. You know, we're going to get 10 to 20%, 15 to 30%. So still that is helpful information. And you can do that for any, any financial data point in your set of projections. If you're curious what a realistic range of revenue is, what is a realistic ex expectation for profit? What's an ex expectation for churn rate? How many customers should you plan to get? What's the typical cost to acquire a customer? All of those things, just so you can measure that against your projections. And you can see ours is, you know, we saw in that one to 10%, zero to 10%. And, you know, we are conservatively within that. And so that would be the recommendation. Your lender is not going to have this sheet that says exactly what it needs to be, but they are going to have some industry benchmarks to see what's realistic in that in that range or maybe what their other clients have experienced. And they're probably going to want to calculate that service coverage ratio, which they're going to see that be 1.2 or higher, most likely. And, you know, that basically means that you project to have a dollar and 20 cents in free cash flow. And for every dollar of debt payments you have, they just want to make sure that the business is, is clearing enough cash to, to, to run the business as well as pay its debts. So that's key point number four, realistic financial projections. I'm not sure if I mentioned, there's also a video demo that shows you how to fill out the whole thing. And we're here to answer questions as you fill it out as well. Okay. And that is going to bring us to the end of the business plan template, but we're missing one key point. And that's key point number five, which is demonstrating skin in the game. This is important, especially if you're trying to get a loan. Insurance agencies do not have a lot of collateral. There's not really equipment. You're probably renting an office. So when it comes to getting a business loan, you don't really have a lot to secure that loan or collateralize that loan, which lenders love to have collateral, especially if it's a traditional bank or even an SBA lender, they're probably going to want to be as collateralized as possible. And so something I want you to be prepared for is what skin in the game do you have to offer or what potential collateral do you have to offer? The reason this is key point is because if there's a collateral shortfall, your lender is going to ask for it already. And so being prepared to know what you are willing to offer or what you have to offer is smart. Now, something I would hear all the time when I was a lender was business owners would come in and they would have received the advice to keep their personal and business separate. And so they would say, I'm not going to offer any personal collateral. And you know, that's good advice when it comes to bookkeeping and bank accounts and to keep those things separate. But it's a really unrealistic expectation to have when it comes to asking for a loan and expecting to receive that without being on the hook for anything. And so it's just like if you're getting a home for a mortgage, you're gonna have a down payment and you're also, the bank's gonna have a lien on the house. So if you default on that mortgage, you're gonna lose your down payment and you're gonna lose your house. Now the lender is not trying to take everything from you, but if they're gonna stick their neck out and you know take the risk to give you that money, they're also gonna expect you to demonstrate that you are you know willing to risk something in order to do that. So expect that to make a, a down payment, which would be like a personal investment. You know, if your startup costs are hundred thousand dollars, the bank's not going to give you hundred thousand dollars. They're going to give you 70%, 80%, 90% of that. And then you have to come up with the other money on your own. And they're also going to probably want some, some collateral. So, and if you don't have that in the business, it might need to be a personal asset. So just be prepared to, to expect that. And that does it. That brings us to the end of the business plan templates. And that was key point number five. I hope you enjoyed this video and it was helpful. If it was give us a thumbs up, consider subscribing to the channel. I owe you a discount code. If you'd like to grab the insurance agency projection template, you can use PH 20 BP to get a 20% discount off that template. It's linked all throughout this. It's also linked down in the description below and we appreciate you hanging out with us and we'll catch you in the next video.